Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Professor Tim Blackman, and I'm, I'm the very proud Pro Vice Chancellor for Research, Scholarship, and Quality at the Open University. By the authority given in the statutes of the Open University, I declare this congregation open for the conferment of degrees and the presentation of graduates. Distinguished guests, graduates and friends of the university, it's my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to the 28th of the Open University's degree ceremonies being held in 2014. We're delighted to welcome principals and directors of other Scottish universities and colleges, heads of other educational bodies, charities and councils, Open University honorary graduates, and former directors of the Open University in Scotland, all of whom have found time in their very busy diaries to be with us today. It's also my great pleasure to welcome our honorary graduates, Professor Leslie Yellowlees and Mr. Alastair Nicholson. We're delighted to be able to honour them today. Each year, the Open University awards over 14,000 degrees, and throughout 2014, more than 7,000 of the graduates are being presented for their qualifications at degree ceremonies such as this one today in Edinburgh. These are being held in 13 different towns and cities throughout the UK, as well as in Dublin, in Versailles, and in other places as far apart as Moscow, Bucharest, and Addis Ababa in Edinburgh. These are being held in 13 different towns and cities throughout the UK, as well as in Dublin, in Versailles, and in other places as far apart as Moscow, Bucharest, and Addis Ababa. This illustrates in the life of you, our graduates, your families and loved ones, as well as the university staff, who I hope you'll feel have nurtured and supported you. And you could be forgiven for feeling that the occasion is so important that it needs to be solemn, and you'd be quite wrong. In every sense, this is an afternoon of celebration. So we'll be very disappointed if anyone crosses the stage today to anything less than thunderous applause, or whatever ever other way you choose to express your enthusiasm and support. With that in mind, would all of today's graduates please briefly stand? And would they please join me in expressing your thanks to all those in the audience who've helped and supported you on what must have at times felt like a long and arduous academic journey? Today's ceremony will begin with the awarding of the honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Professor Leslie Yellenese, Professor Hazel Reimer, Dean and Director of Studies in the Faculty of Science, will present Professor Yellenese, who will sign the honorary graduate's book and make a reply. Following this, we'll see the presentation of those graduates who've gained a higher degree and who've been able to attend here today. They will be presented by Dr. James Miller, Director of the Open University in Scotland. We'll then see the awarding of the honorary degree of Doctor of the University to Mr. Alastair Nicholson. Dr. Miller will present Mr. Nicholson, who will sign the honorary graduate's book and make a reply. Then we'll continue our presentation of graduates with those who have gained first degrees. They will be presented by Mrs. Lucy McLeod, Deputy Director of the Open University in Scotland. To conclude the ceremony, I'll give a personal address to the graduates.
Pro Vice-Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, guests. Professor Leslie Yellowlease is one of Britain's most eminent chemists. She's also one of our most inspiring scientists. Born in London, Leslie studied chemical physics at Edinburgh, but began her career with a brief period working for the National Health Service. This short time away from science made her realize where her true passion lay, and she returned to chemistry with work at a research laboratory in Brisbane, Australia. Back in Edinburgh, she earned a PhD in chemistry and then embarked on a distinguished research career, holding an academic post at Edinburgh before becoming chair of inorganic electrochemistry and subsequently head of the School of Chemistry. A specialist in spectroelectrochemistry, she is perhaps best known for her major breakthrough in ruthenium dye, which gained her an international reputation. The dye sensitized, sorry, the dye sensitized solar cells that have been the focus of her research are not only helping scientists from across the world to develop the potential of solar panels, but also have far broader applications. Her work has evolved in the direction of electroparamagnetic resonance spectroscopy, and more recently, she's been working on the miniaturization of spectroelectrochemical spectro cells. <laughs> it's very difficult. <laughs> She began her long association with the Royal Society of Chemistry in 1990. From 2005, she was chair of the Science and Technology Board and then led its successor, the Science Technology Board. In 2011, a year that celebrated the centenary of Marie Curie's Nobel Prize, Nobel Prize in Chemistry, she was appointed the first female president of the Royal Society of Chemistry. Her priorities as president were to promote public engagement with science and to support the progress of women within science. This has been close to her heart in Ed at Edinburgh where, under her leadership, the School of Chemistry was given the Equality Challenge Unit Silver Athena Swan Award. Many students and academics have paid tribute to her genuine commitment to the cause of women in science, investing her considerable energy, efforts and expertise into helping a new generation of female chemists get their careers off the ground. Her focus is on the retention as well as recruitment of talented women particularly through nurturing a career, like a culture within science that is more family friendly and encourages greater diversity. She simultaneously served as head of the College of Science and, Ed and Engineering at Edinburgh, where she is also vice principal, and thus has said she was lucky enough to have both her dream jobs at the same time. In 2011, she was named by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry as a Distinguished Woman in Science, and the following year, she was elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society of Edinburgh. She was awarded an MBE in 2005 and a CBE earlier this year. Professor Yellowlees has made an outstanding contribution to her field, and through her wider work to encourage diversity in science, she has also greatly enriched the scientific community. Pro Vice-Chancellor, by authority of the Senate, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of the University, Leslie Yellowlees. Vice-Chancellor, staff, graduates and friends of the Open University, thank you very much indeed for bestowing on me this honorary degree. I'm thrilled and I'm delighted to accept it. This is a wonderful occasion. I love graduation ceremonies. I love seeing everyone dressed up in their gowns, surrounded by their supporters, bursting with pride and I love all the attendant celebrations. As an honorary graduate, I get the privilege of two minutes of your time. So firstly, I would like to thank 
on your and my behalf, all those who have helped us arrive here today. In my case, a very big thank you to my husband Peter and my mother Jean, who are both here today. Thank you for your love and encouragement over the years. I'd like to thank the University of Edinburgh and the Royal Society of Chemistry for giving me opportunities and support. And to my long-suffering students, I really couldn't have done it without them. My godmother, Mary, was especially delighted to learn that I was receiving an honorary degree from the Open University today. She began her studies for a BA degree with the OU the very first year the OU came into its being. She remembers being classed as a remote area student whilst living in Galashiels. <laughs> Secondly, thank you, Hazel, for all the nice things you said about me. I never set out to become the president of the Royal Society of Chemistry or vice principal and head of the College of Science and Engineering at the University of Edinburgh and to be the first woman to hold both positions is staggering. However, when the opportunities arose, I took them and have never regretted so doing. So often today, we, and women in particular, are encouraged to learn to say no. But I would urge you to look for opportunities, grasp them with both hands, and not to be afraid to say yes. My guiding principle has been to never look back and wish I'd done something. I've enjoyed the best of times, and occasionally, when it doesn't work out, I learn and I move on. So tonight, celebrate well, and then look to your future. Embrace it as a wonderful opportunity. Decide what success means to you and go for it but remain true to yourself. You have given yourselves a fantastic boost graduating with a degree from the Open University. The OU is a tremendous force for educational change. It is admired and emulated across the globe. Recently, Google revealed that the OU was the third most searched for university in the world. That's a powerful position and it's evidence of the high regard an OU qualification enjoys. I remember many years ago, when I was an undergraduate, staying up late at night to watch OU programs on statistical thermodynamics, which, whisper it, were significantly better delivered on BBC Two than by my undergraduate lecturers. <laughs> the OU was a leader then and is a leader now. For example, the Open Science Laboratory Project is transforming approaches to practical science, and I very much enjoyed a demonstration of its potential by Dr. Rob Jaynes earlier this year at the Welsh Assembly. I've also been watching with great interest Dr. James Bruce's work on VLEE portfolios, which allows researchers to plan and record their skills training. The OU delivers material of the highest quality to school pupils such as the module Living Without Oil, produced with the Royal Society of Chemistry, through to cutting edge research in, for example, space, the environment and the brain, and I could go on. However, I've had my two minutes. So I'm truly honoured to be now part of this great institution. Well done to each and every one of you. And thank you. Thank you. Pro Vice-Chancellor, I shall now present graduates who have gained higher degrees and have been able to attend here today. 
For the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, I present to you for a thesis entitled Conceptual Metaphor, Human Computer Interaction and Music, Applying Conceptual Metaphor to the Design and Analysis of Music Interactions, Katie Wilkie. And for a doctorate in education, I present to you for a thesis entitled Developing Online Teacher Communities to Support Communication and Collaboration, Victoria Lyon. I present to you for the degree of Master of Arts in Childhood and Youth, Sarah O'Sullivan. <laughs> for the degree of Master of Arts in English with Distinction, I present Martin Hesseltine. For the degree of Master of Arts in Social Science, I present Heather Canton. <laughs> Keely Crow. <laughs> Megan Farr. Helen Law. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Business Administration, I present Charlotte Blackwood. <laughs> Ian Davidson. Helen Harrison. <laughs> Alex Holly. <laughs> Rupert Hipwell. <laughs> Yalt Ego. Ida Jackerman. <laughs> Stuart Jackson. <laughs> Soren Kester. Alison McKee. <laughs> Tekla Niru. <laughs> Julia Nekunivnova. Deborah Niven. Jo <laughs> Joanne O'Brien. <laughs> Chris.
Chris Radmal. Christopher Schmiekal. Orla Veni Aru. <laughs> Natalie Watt. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Education, I present Laura Hamill. John Rainford. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Engineering, I present Andrew Giles. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Advancing Healthcare Practice, I present Fiona Barrett. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Development Management, I present Nicola Brandstetter. For the degree of Master of Science in Forensic Psychology and Criminology with Distinction, I present Caroline Elen. <laughs> Jan Taylor. For the degree of Master of Science in Forensic Psychology and Criminology, I present Sharon Milchreist. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Human Resource Management, I present Martin Tennant. For the degree of Master of Science in Management and Business Research Methods, I present Fiona Tierney. <laughs> For the degree of Master of Science in Psychological Research Methods with distinction, Rowena Harrison. For the degree of Master of Science in Psychological Research Methods, Faye Bevan. <laughs> Cheryl Reese. For the degree of Master of Science in Social Research Methods, I present Sarah Davidson. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Science in Systems Thinking Practice, I present Laura Allison. <laughs> and Deborah Quigley.
Pro Vice Chancellor, colleagues, graduates, guests. Alistair Nicholson is one of Scotland's foremost composers and has proven himself to be a leading force in music circles in Scotland. Born in Inverness and brought up on the Isle of Skye and the Black Isle, Alistair studied at Edinburgh University and later became Shaw McPhee Langfellow, working in composition and music theatre. Alistair's outstanding qualities were noted at an early stage. It was not long after the completion of his studies at Edinburgh that his first commissions started rolling in and his talents were being sought in relation to composition along with work in theatre and opera as music director and conductor. Winning the IBM Composers Prize in 1993 for The Tree of Strings was a precursor to even wider appreciative audiences for his music in the UK and overseas. Alistair Nicholson has gone on to work with some of the world's best orchestras, ensembles and soloists. His music is widely performed and broadcast and it has been extensively recognised and praised for its clarity, craftsmanship and individuality. He has worked with around 20 different theatre companies across the UK and Europe, including working for a time as a pianist and conductor at the Opera di Monte Carlo, allowing him to explore his great love of opera and the human voice. In 2000, he, he conducted his opera Ice with the City of London Symphonia at the Great Hall of the People's Palace, London. In 2008, he made his debut with London Symphony Orchestra and Chorus at the Barbican, conducting his hour-long work, Two Sisters, A Rose, A Flood and Snow. Alistair has been an inspirational leader and musical director for two years at the Bath International Music Festival and at the St Magnus International Festival of which the Open University in Scotland is now a proud sponsor. Under his leadership, the Orkney Festival has grown to be one of Scotland's premier cultural events. <clears throat> Alistair's achievements are wide and varied within the field of composition, performance and conducting. However, we are also celebrating and recognising his passion for working with an education in developing music outreach programmes and in nurturing musical talents amongst aspiring musicians and within local communities. As artistic director for the nationwide project Sound Investors for a three year period, Alistair was an influential and enthusiastic leader in engaging young people in developing their composition talents. Alistair has become an inspirational figure for many young talented artists through leading the St Magnus Composers course, teaching on the Britain Peers programme and giving masterclasses and workshops in most of the UK's conservatoires and universities. Alistair has also inspired future generations to become interested in music through writing many pieces to include children and other non-music professionals. In awarding this honorary degree, the Open University is, is delighted to be able to recognise Alistair's illustrious career here today. And we are particularly pleased that we are able to share this special occasion with not only his partner, Dr David Knox, but his sister, senior academic in the Open University, Margaret Nicholson. Pro Vice Chancellor, by the authority of Senate, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of the University, Alistair Nicholson. Pro Vice-Chancellor, 
members of Senate, um, graduates in waiting, I think graduates you're usually called, um, and honoured guests, um, it's a great pleasure for me to receive this honour today. Um, a great pleasure particularly to receive this honour and degree from the Open University. It's an organisation which I admire hugely and whose work stretches far beyond boundaries of geography, social status and previous experience and it reaches out to anyone with a keen interest and thirst for knowledge. So it doesn't matter where you live, who you are or what you know, is not only a description of the Open University's accessibility, but perhaps the ideal description of my preferred audience as a composer and festival director. The preferred audience, I think, of any artist. I'm also delighted um, that this ceremony is taking place in this 100-year-old music venue, this hall. I think built originally via the money from whiskey. I think Mr. Rusher made his money from whiskey, so there you are. Um, it's, it's wonderful to bring together here today the worlds of education and art. For me, these are two distinct areas but are closely connected in their purpose and place in society. It's strange for me sometimes that I find myself explaining, perhaps even justifying, why writing, singing, drawing and dancing are as fundamental to society as education. This last week, we saw uh, one of the big arts organisations in this country come close to the edge in financial terms. And I was horrified, shocked, concerned to find that a lot of people were um, unsure why this should exist. In fact, actively, aggressively uh, saying that it didn't really have a place in the world and that arts was for the few. Um, it led me to think what I might say today. Um, and led me perhaps to something which is ambitious, but I'm going to try and do it, um, which is, given a captive audience, um, I might try to answer the question, what art's for? Why it's important as a part of this world and why I do what I do. Don't worry, um, what I've got written here is in a giant font so I can see it, so I won't be long. Um, art is, for us all, a necessary part of life. It tempers situations, it expresses the inexpressible. It fills the gap between the everyday and the spiritual. It's about innovation, exploration, pioneering, risk-taking, and the recording of events. It relies on curiosity, intrigue, open minds, a sense of adventure, and a willingness to be moved. Without all this, we sit waiting, wondering what happens next, what's going to become of us and then the mischief starts. So that's why I think art is important to us. Why I do what I do as a creative artist, I'm afraid I'm going to have to resort to quoting another well-known British composer by the name of Michael Tippett. He said, my true function within a society which embraces all of us is to continue an age-old tradition. The tradition is to create images from the depths of the imagination and to give them form whether visual, intellectual, or musical. So there you are. I hope that this might argue the case for art, but equally, I'm sure, it argues the case for education. The same things apply to both. Both are the things that bring me here today, and I'm delighted to be receiving this honorary doctorate. Thanks to Dr. Miller for his kind words. Um, my thanks to my partner David, my family, um, and I must dedicate this today to my mother, who uh, knew I was getting this honorary doctorate, discussed what I might have to wear for the occasion, but sadly passed away some weeks ago. So in her absence, um, this is dedicated to her. I'm honoured and lucky to do what I do. I'm honoured to have this recognised by the Open University, one of the great institutions of this country. My congratulations perhaps even apologies, because I haven't had to do any exams or do any projects, to the graduates in waiting. Um, thank you very much.
Pro Vice-Chancellor, we now come to the part of today's ceremony that marks the presentation of graduates who have gained a first degree and have been able to attend here today. The full subject and classification details are printed in the directory of graduates. I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Arts with first class honours, Simon Bertel. Richard Brown. <laughs> Emma Bryan. Yes. John Burton. Anne Cleave. Yeah. Neil Cowmeadow. Yeah. Deborah Creedy. Heather Crumley. <laughs> Ian Donnelly. <laughs> Kirsty Ferry. Pauline Freer. <laughs> Janice Halbert. <laughs> Una Hort. Stephen Kerr. <laughs> Teresa Langer. <laughs> Rosemary Lester. Gary Langstaff. <laughs> Fiona McPherson. <laughs> Victoria McIntosh. Donna McLean. <laughs> Robert Moore. <laughs> Helen Nicholson. Ian Rawls. <laughs> Marion Reed. <laughs> Karen Thurkle.
and Alan Wilkie. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts with honours, I present Anka Addy. Zaid Asgar. <laughs> Sybil Basica. <laughs> Christy Barron. Brenda Bartlett. <laughs> Caitlin Blick. <laughs> Adrian Borles. Lee Bushby. <laughs> Sheila Caldwell. <laughs> Timothy Carmichael. Graham Chaplin. <laughs> Anthony Chen. <laughs> Jessica Cross. Fiona Curry. Karen Darcy. Laura Daglish. Silvana Diane Delate. <laughs> Helen Diamond. Emma Dixon. John Doak. Jonathan Dunlop. David Eddy. <laughs> Hayley Edge. <laughs> Peter Ennis. Caroline Fennimore. <laughs> Rory Forrest. <laughs> Claire Gillespie.
Charlotte College. Thomas Goodwin. Tony Hampshire. Nicola Hazard. Jennifer Hinnigan. Sheena Holland. Claire Howey. John Hutchison. Fraser Johnson. Emma Kelly. Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Mary Killen. Claire Littlewood <laughs> Kirsten MacDonald <laughs> Alan Manderson Karen Mathy. <laughs> Alan McBain. Geraldine Mackay. <laughs> Baxter McKellar. <laughs> Leslie McNaughton. Edith Miller. <laughs> Gavin Mitchell. <laughs> Jane Morgan. Morris 
Nick Morris. Emma Motion. <laughs> Jamie Murphy. Claire Murray. Victoria Newman. Jacqueline Nye. Daniel O'Connor. Jennifer O'Donnell. Fiona Oatman. Alan Paget. <laughs> Catherine Park. <laughs> Catherine Perkins. Lindsay Petrie. Christopher Pratt. Gillian Raybon. Fiona Redpath. <laughs> Arwell Roberts. Ian Russell. <laughs> Caroline Scott. <laughs> Ginny Seeley. Ash. <laughs> Neil Smale. <laughs> Layla Smith. Margaret Smith. <laughs> Rasheen Southwick. <laughs> Diana Stodto. Richard Street. <laughs> Lynn.
Lillian Tate. Steve Taylor. Jacqueline Thompson. Joseph Tierney. William Trail. Sarah Trevino. Luke Usher. Deborah Wolbaum. Kirsty Walker. <laughs> Stacy Walton. <laughs> Leslie Waters. Stephen Wheelhouse. <laughs> Julie Wilkinson. <laughs> David Will. Mara Wilson. And Martin Yates. For the degree of Bachelor of Arts, I present Alexandra Brown. Sandy Bushby. <laughs> Rebecca Clark. <laughs> Fiona Duncan. Karen Hutchison. <laughs> Emma McCauley. <laughs> Sarah Ratcliffe. Maureen Robertson. <laughs> Ailey Steele. <laughs> Carol Thompson. and Douglas Thompson.
for the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with first class honours, I present William Totten. For the degree of Bachelor of Engineering with Honours, I present Adam Gallagher. <laughs> Jamie Gallagher. And David Williams. For the degree of Bachelor of Laws with First Class Honours, I present Natalie Bell. For the degree of Bachelor of Laws with honours, I present Libia Roldan McRobb. <laughs> For the degree of Bachelor of Science with first class honours, I present Lucy Atkinson. Matthew Bruff. Claire Claymore. John Jarvis. Karen Johnston. <laughs> Helena Mackay. <laughs> Thomas McSkimming. Alison Middleton. Margot Murray. Victoria Plumridge. John Potter. John Robinson. Louise Sinclair. Brian Spence. <laughs> Emily Trenum. <laughs> May Watson. And David Wilson. <laughs> For
For the degree of Bachelor of Science with honours, I present Linda Barr. <laughs> Louise Brooks. <laughs> Andy Brown. Sharon Brown <laughs> Catherine Brucken <laughs> Hugh Campbell Rebecca Carr <laughs> Michelle Kavanagh Graham Kay <laughs> Ian Cooksey <laughs> Gregory Copeland Thomas Darach <laughs> Julie Dean <laughs> Lorraine Farker Vicky Gilfillan <laughs> Simon Hartley <laughs> Andrew Hill Nadia Hussein <laughs> Kerry Johnston <laughs> Julia Kennison <laughs> Georgina MacDonald <laughs> Murdo MacDonald <laughs> and Chris McKenzie Harry McLean <laughs> Michael Morley <laughs> Alison Murray
Linda Patterson. <laughs> Maxine Piper. <laughs> Caroline Pritchard. Nicola Riza Chris Reynolds Kate Rose Tracy Russell, Heather Scott, Carolina Shedlanowska. Andrew Simpson. Fiona Squires. Leslie Veal. Colin Wallace, <laughs> Matthew Ward, <laughs> Janet West. Kasia Vilcineska <laughs> Maria Weiber <laughs> and Siobhan Young For the degree of Bachelor of Science, I present Gavin Alexander. <laughs> Sasha Jane Butler. Janice Caldwell <laughs> Carol Cunningham <laughs> David Doan Emilio Falcone <laughs> June Fraser <laughs> Diane Graham Douglas Hutchian <laughs> J. 
John Jardine. James Kirkwood. Claire MacDonald. Irene Montgomery. Amanda Pottinger. Graham Smith. Maxine Togneri. And Shirley Williamson. For a foundation degree, I present Peter Easton. Simon Cabell. Sarah Penny. <laughs> and Fiona Taylor. For the Diploma of Higher Education, I present Lynn Bruce. <laughs> Brian Dale. <laughs> Jennifer Ellis. Alina McCaskill Simpson. <laughs> David Mackey. <laughs> Martin Usman. Denise Oldman, Oldham. Liz White. And for the Professional Graduate Certificate in Education, I present Ruth McCraith. Thank you everyone for, for coming today to what's always a marvellous and very 
special occasion when we celebrate the achievements of our new graduates. I'm sure our graduates will remember this day for the rest of your lives, looking splendid in your gowns and hoods, here in the Usher Hall on its 100th anniversary. This great building is right at the heart of Edinburgh, the festival city. It's one of the main venues for the Edinburgh International Festival and many other events that make the cultural life of this city so vibrant. And the Open University is proud to be part of it. We sponsor the Edinburgh International Book Festival and just across the road at the Film House, our co-production with the BBC, the drama Castles in the Sky, was premiered during the Edinburgh Film Festival before being screened on television in September. Castles in the Sky was based on the Scotsman Robert Watson Watt, played by Eddie Izzard, whose invention of the radar was crucial to winning the Battle of Britain and preventing a Nazi invasion. Edinburgh as a festival city is all about the arts and the arts being for everyone. Today we're celebrating that education is for everyone as well. Watson Watt's ideas were initially dismissed by an Oxbridge-dominated establishment as castles in the sky, but he and his fellow scientists had the self-belief to succeed. We're here now to celebrate the belief that you had in yourselves and that your family and friends had in you. That amid the busyness of your lives, the doubts many of you will have had about whether you could succeed and the challenges and difficulties along the way, you made it to graduation. It's not easy being an OU student, often juggling study and deadlines with all the demands of family and working lives. Indeed, some of those with you today will, we may, may well recognize the adage that there's only one thing harder than being an OU student, and that's living with one. <laughs> Among the people that have supported you are the university's tremendous staff, our advisors, academics, student services staff, and our associate lecturers. Let's show our thanks to them all now. It's been a great privilege to celebrate our honorary graduates today as well. Alastair Nicholson, whose music and festivals have so enriched so many lives, and Leslie Yellowlees, whose remarkable achievements cast such a light on why we have so few women in science and engineering, an issue for all of us as we face such shortages of scientists and engineers in the future. One of our other distinguished honorary graduates, Bill Bryson, wrote this a little while ago. What other nation in the world could have given us William Shakespeare, pork pies, Christopher Wren, Windsor Great Park, and the Open University? But it was, of course, a Scot and a woman who gave us our iconic institution, Jenny Lee, who I'll come back to in a moment. We might reflect on how young our great university is compared to other well-known seats of learning. In fact, this year, as we've heard already, is the 40th anniversary of the first OU graduation in Scotland at the Assembly Rooms here in Edinburgh. We've had several centuries less than some to become such a respected institution. So it's all the more remarkable that we have levels of student satisfaction with the quality of what we do that rate us among the best universities in Scotland and the UK. There's no doubt that this, that this success owes a huge amount to the staff whose work we've just acknowledged, but it also owes a huge amount to the vision of the pioneers who created the OU back in 1969. Jenny Lee was foremost among those pioneers, a woman whose own journey from a Scottish mining community to Minister of State has left an indelible mark on what our open university is today. What we are is a community where what matters is wanting to learn, not our social class, gender, ethnic group, or where we're from. This is what Jenny Lee said in a speech back in 1971. She said, 
It's a complete fallacy to think of the open university as a working class university, or a middle class university, or a millionaire's university, although there are a few millionaires who could be improved by a course. It's simply something in the flow of our time, simply making the highest level of scholarship over the arts, science and technology available to much larger numbers than ever in the past. You, our graduates, have achieved the level of scholarship that Jenny Lee celebrates in this speech through the courage to know that this is possible. Your university is not just a leading teaching university, but a research university too. Our research enriches what we teach, but it's also about our innate curiosity as human beings. That's what motivated our scientists to work on sending a spacecraft to chase a comet millions of miles from Earth, searching for the answer to how water formed on our planet. In November, it'll land on the comet's surface, an amazing feat of science. This research also has great economic value. The huge amount of information now sent back to Earth from satellites is helping to create new businesses and new jobs, but brings challenges about how to analyze what's called big data and keep it secure. Big data is now everywhere in the digital world. Every time we use a swipe card, mobile phone, click a mouse, visit the doctor, or even drive along the road, we're generating data that someone else is using. Our computer scientists and mathematicians at the OU are using it to solve problems like how to prevent our cities grinding to a halt with traffic congestion, or how we can protect ourselves from the spread of infectious diseases. Our social scientists and philosophers are working on it too, such as how we protect individual rights and privacy. Universities are about our common good, as well as private benefit. And I'm sure that you're all as proud as I am of the OU's mission to promote educational opportunity as a way to a more just and equitable world. Much is said, in these, days, much is said these days about the personal financial return from a university degree, which is significant in terms of future earnings. That's important, but less is said about the social return. Graduates are, on average, healthier and happier than non-graduates and contribute their new confidence and skills in many ways to society. So put your degrees to good use, make tomorrow better, and show the world what's remarkable about open university graduates. Stay part of our community as alumni or by studying again, and remember those words on our university crest, learn and live. Thank you. Would all of today's graduates please stand? May I ask all of the guests assembled here today to once again express their warmest congratulations and best wishes to you all. Well done. The proceedings of this degree ceremony have been completed, and I declare this meeting of congregation closed. The piper will now provide us with a musical farewell, at the end of it, which would everyone please stand. <laughs>